Right, Tubesters, uh, there was a pit stop, uh, needed a, a food break, <laughs> so um, we return. Now, I've done a couple of things uh, off camera, if we get our words right. I've put the brass down on the, on the drum, I've just put a, a sky grey on the ropes, the strength, the tightening uh, ropes. Uh, I've done a little design, usually done a, a laurel wreath around the regimental number. Uh, obviously, it's harder to do the, <laughs> the bigger the number, uh, but we're lucky in this case. So, um, that's where we've got so far. I think everything else has been covered. So we're going to actually do the the whitened ropes on the drum. And this is with German tank uh, win winter tank uniform. Now unlike the front rank uh, drums, these haven't got particularly big ropes. So you haven't got a lot to work with, you can't really pick out individual rope strands so you've just really got to put some some little white dots in as a representation of, of rope again just take a bit of excess paint off your brush the leather tabs you want to leave a bit of sky grey showing through Actually, I haven't done the, uh, the skin of the drum yet, and that'll be roughly a warm, a warm type of white. Sometimes, if you can, it's best just to hit it with the side of the brush near the tip. And again, you can always uh, go over the any paintwork that you've inadvertently uh, strayed into another area with. Just little dabs. Uh, you know, it's just it's one bit probably the drum could. I suppose it's obviously that the ropes are in scale with the rest of him, but it could have just done with being a bit more defined. But I suppose it obviously goes on the size of the, the size of the sculpt. I've just caught the edge of the drum there. Well, while we're using white paint, we'll go around the last couple of bits before we go back and just tidy that up. I mean, you probably realise, but the the hoops that hang down from the drum, uh, when you see them in a, you know, when they're beating the drum, that's the actual bits that they put over the shoulders. I'm not teaching you to suck eggs, but. <laughs> Just filling dead air time, as they say, is in professional circles. I'm undecided whether to actually dull the drum down. I don't think I will. Um, the actual brass work on. I'll normally put a a couple of washes of inks or paint over them just to dull it down a bit more, but I quite like the idea of this uh, shining away a bit. A bit too much paint there. I'm 
I'll just go on the very ends there as they're going to be on show. We'll put a little dab of white paint on each end just to make sure it's uh, it's seen. Right, I think that's our, our drum painted. Well, obviously not the skin, but uh, I'm just debating. There isn't anything else I'm going to do with a white at the moment, so I think we'll go on to warm white now. We'll probably be using that on the drum skin as well. Let's have a look. Plastic camera keeps just millimeter by millimeter, <laughs> and you can you can put your figure down, and by the time the camera's moved, uh, everything's moved on again. I'm using my ultra skinny um, brush here. People often ask me, you know, why do you paint with such tiny brushes, and I can't really answer that. <laughs> it's just habit. Don't you realise you could go quicker if you if you didn't use such skinny brushes? Yeah, I could. <laughs> it's just what you what you're comfortable using really at the end of the day. Get back in shot again, Gavin. Let's move this plastic camera again. I'm painting in the evening now, and the window's still open, and you can see the difference in the light on the. It's a lot brighter. And this is the problem, you've got to get a handle. When you're doing these videos, you need to get a handle on how your camera works in different light conditions. And I just, you know, it just doesn't float my boat, you know what I mean? It's, um, I've only got enough brain power to uh, sustain a certain, certain amount. So these different straps and slings and whatever they'll they'll be just as if I did a warm white on some of my other videos. So we'll mix this with some pale sand in a minute. This is hopefully. little belt needs doing as well around the, the apron itself. This is where sometimes you may have to just tidy up afterwards when you on the last the last run in with a figure just go around it one last time make sure you've got all your paint still within reach that you can just touch little bits up. As so I say if you can if you can learn to be fairly tidy at an early stage when you start painting, it'll probably pay dividends uh, as you print you know as you go on. You don't have to tidy up half as much. Now, because we've done the the ropes in this uh, this white, well, they've probably used pipe clay or whatever to whiten it up. I think I'll actually do that sling. Well, I've already done the other one, haven't I? Uh, no, stuff it will do it. It will do both straps warm. Still not sure about this piece here. It just cuts off. I take it they stitched or strapped it to the to 
the actual uh, the other straps. I thought there might have been a some type of buckle or press stud or something there. The actual while that wall white's drying off, um, I'll use this grey just to do the straps on the grey coat. As I say, when you do, sorry if you can't see this, when you're doing different all the different straps and that, if you can change it slightly, it just breaks up. A particular block of colour. So we can get in there. Then we need to. We need to just go round the actual drum, it's uh, the skin itself. <coughs> this is going to probably take a couple of applications, it always does. And of course, I've run out of paint to replen. Don't want to overwork it at the end of the day. Problem is, if you try and overwork paint as it's drying out, it will crumb up on you. So just let it dry out. We still want to do this, is going to be good. Just trying to get the inside face of this, which is actually the bottom of the drum, actually. See if we can get in there without marking everything else. Yeah, I think that will do us. The hot from the inside of this strap, which is going to be again a bit awkward. Let's get some excess paint off. We'll have another go on that that drum skin again and then go over the the straps one more time. And as I say we'll mix that then with some pale sand. I'll say it's mainly all coming together now. I'm just debating whether I I um, improve on that uh, laurel round his round his shako cover. Try and just pick it out a bit more. I did try it with some lighter colour paint, but it was just uh, it was a no goer really. So I'll have a I'll have a look off camera. See if it's worth trying to throw some more time at it. Oh, we've got to do this little, this little belt down here as well. Not sure if I'm gonna to have to tidy that up with a bit of brown. 
Right. If anything else, we'll uh, mix some pale sand in. work on these straps again. Again this might be a bit overkill um, taking the colour transition up slightly on these straps but sometimes you can end up with a again that chalky chalky look So it's best just to mix in a bit of pale sand first. And this is the same mix that I use on my, my trouser combinations when I'm, I'm doing that warmer look. So if you do the dark sand and then once you've done that as your base, put 50% uh, pale sand in with it. And then your next highlight would be pale sand and then 50-50 pale sand and ivory and then uh, ivory is your, is your last one and that'll give you a nice a nice warm trouser look don't think it's worth doing any more to the other side of the face of that drum because it's so far in the shadows you'd never even see it and uh, now that little bit of strapping on the great coat's dried out, we'll just put a bit of white in there. It's probably one of my greatest downfalls when I'm painting. I tend to, I, I'm not massively mechanical with it. You know, I, I tend to just flick from bit to bit, which means I, especially with something with a lot of straps, I quite often leave something out that I only notice at the last minute, which can be a bit uh, a bit annoying to say the least. All right, we'll go on pale pale sand. I'm running out of room on my palette here actually. Just squeezing the life out of it just to finish this uh, this figure off. Right. I say so the the um, the white on the the vest and on the um, the coat tails will uh, will put a couple of spots of uh, bright white in those in a bit. I was debating whether to do the, the bits, the, the two drumstick holders, whatever the official name is. Um, I was debating whether to do those brass, but I've I've left them with the the leather look. Now I'm going to see if it's worth going straight to ivory because we're only doing the edges of the belt so I'll probably go straight to ivory um, with these last highlights on the straps.
Got to do his pom pom as well, yeah. Let's get some of that pale sand on this drum skin. Again, we don't want that too stark white, uh, which probably looks under the lights. I think we'll do the pom pom. We've got the blue, so let's give him a, a blue pom pom. I might as well do it while we're here before I do start doing the face. So we've got a fair amount of blue with the rest of the rest of the figure. Just uh, swap some paint around. We'll just put a put a bit of a pom pom highlight on before we start the flesh. There's me getting sidetracked again. Paint's just about had it. This blue paint will just about get get away with get away with highlighting. That'll do us. We'll go to the usual usual first step, which is uh, medium flesh from Vallejo. And we'll start with the hand first. It's only a little small chubby hand, there's not a not a lot to it. And what I'd say when you're doing hands like this is to draw your paint away from the cuff rather than towards a cuff because I will guarantee you you'll end up uh, getting paint on the cuff which is something you'll have to clear up again and especially something that's a bit more involved like this cuff. And you just watch now, <laughs> the law of the paintbrush will mean I'm going to catch this and end up doing more work. I do think this uh, this Vallejo uh, triad that I use, well I call it a triad, um, I'm not saying it's sold that way by, by Vallejo, but uh, I use uh, medium, flat and then sunny, and then you'll see me usually make a, a wash with some reds or purples, blue sometimes, uh, to you know make different, sh different shades around the, the face or the hands for whatever needs. And I'll sometimes put obviously fingernails in, bit of silver grey or, or that tank uniform white again, depending how stark you want to go, or you can use ivory obviously if you want it to be a bit more subdued. And again, 
skin. Habit usually has me doing the nose first. No other reason than <laughs> habit. And as usual, you know, you've heard it a million times off everyone. Just uh, if you haven't, if you're fairly new to painting, obviously leave the deepest recesses in your base colour, especially on faces. Though I'll be putting a bit of a bit of reds or some you know some colour in there just to pick out some details. I say I'm not a big fan of of washes. Um, I can understand they get into the grooves of the, the faces and things like that, but uh, I just like I just like it's my own style. I just like to to paint what I call clean. Um, also, we've got to pick that hair out as well. Let's get some different paint, which will be flat flesh. I'll tell you what, my desk just gets, I have these, I, get, I managed to keep it clean for a bit. When I was, and when I say clean, just as in tidy. And at the moment I'm looking around, I've got um, still got some 10 mil American Civil War Rebs on the lolly sticks I'm just when I've got spare paint I just literally have a couple of minutes using that up on them so I've still got three lolly sticks of those on the go I've got a found I dug out a couple more again I'm unfortunately few guys Napoleonics um, I've got a couple of extra figures uh, some peri peri metal figures I found bottom of a box on those I've got uh, lurking in a box I've got my um, 1 in 72 scale starfighter uh, which I'm uh, making a right hash of, which uh, I've got a video coming up in the next few days. Uh, I've just doing the touch up uh, undercoating on some more ABs, which will be Italian line infantry. Again, for the same client, so unfortunately, you won't see them based. Although I always think his basin is a lot better than mine, so probably, probably more fortunate that way. Let's have a go on this face. Again, I usually put a dot on the end of the nose, a dot on the middle of the bridge of the nose, then I go very slightly in either side, but trying to keep a base, a gap where your base is showing through. And that just helps define the face a bit. If you can do the, you know, like the nostrils, just takes a, a bit of, bit of practice and a bit of time, and it's be surprising what you can get. Get the eyelid done here. Again, as we've said before, our eyes is when you're painting eyes, it's, you know, it's something you that you don't have to do. There's the age-old thing. Yes, they might look good on photographs, but you wouldn't see them on the tabletop or at scale and all the rest of it. I try and tend, unless the client asks me different, um, I will normally try and attempt to put eyes in, it just depends. It just depends, um, you know, what you've got to work with really. Sometimes you can just put the, I'll always use like again this tank uniform white or even silver, silver, um, silver what, uh, silver, silver grey, I should say. Um, 
you don't want to put uh, pure white into the the eye sockets because it it really does overpower and they do just start getting that fried egg look. Now that face, if you get away with doing you know nothing else really um, on a small face like this, bearing in mind this is more of a 25 mil figure, you know you, you could get away with that really. Let's put a um, or you know rather than use this um, sunny skin tone, just put a bit of white into that flat flesh. I won't be using a lot of this. And just as I'm talking, I'm debating whether I I go for those eyes. I probably will. On a on a won't let you do anything else. You <laughs> you've got to got to give it a go. And you know that's going to end in tears. All right, so let's just get a bit of this again at the end of the very tip of the nose. Cheekbones again on the highest uh, highest ridge. So you don't want to go overboard. You can turn the whole face uh, white. I mean, on fifty-four mil figures, there's a lot of movement these days in painting the face is a lot brighter. Um, I reckon you know it makes the, the face stand out if you're at competitions and things. Do the knuckles a bit here. But I still prefer a lot of times for the faces to be that slightly darker look. Again each to his own. Oh we've got to do a Looking at that black as well here, and I haven't done the highlights on it. You know, when, whenever you think, I wouldn't have done this this face, and if I'd have thought I hadn't done the the gaiters and stuff, but I haven't highlighted the gaiters or any other black bits on here. So that's a pain in the mum. Right, that's our guy without any eyes. Got no fingernails as such to to see, so we are gonna take our let's get our really really tiny. Now this brush I've shown you before. Let's just where are we? Can't even see where I am. Army painter call this the psycho. And it is a it is really tiny. If you use it, you need to dab it in some water first, make sure the water's off the ferrule, that's the metal bit, uh, because you'll end up with a big drip going down into the eyes and making a right mess. Um, keep a damp brush handy uh, to wick away any paint that you uh, might overspill. And literally you've got, with this tiny brush, you've, you've got one go at it really. And that's already drying out. It's so tiny that it has its uses. I mean, I do use it for um, if I'm doing. I've got to do some motifs or or, or something on the on the 18 mil figures, um, and I do use it for doing eyes. Anything where I've got to just do a tiny, tiny little little dab. Again, you've still got to knock that bit of extra paint off onto your finger. Never be afraid to never be afraid to turn the figure upside down as well if it means you can get to the paint uh, to the to the eyes uh, easier. Right, I'm just having a quick look. We don't want to use black because I think it will it will be way too stark. So just bear with me while I check on this. I've got so many little dabs of paint on this palette. Let me 
not sure if that's going to be dark enough. Now let's bite the bullet and get some get some black grey out. everything up. That's the best I'm going to get. If you can get them looking a particular, rather than trying to get it dead centre, um, try and get them looking off to one side. Hopefully the sculpt will do that for you where they'll have a particular look, but uh, just get them to look off to the left or the right and that will help you because then if you have gone slightly askew with your, with your eyeballs, you can get another, without having to redo them all, get another bit of white paint or whatever you've used for the, for the, for the whites of the eyes and you should just be able to dab it on a, with a small brush like this into a particular corner, whether the, you know, the opposite corner to where they're looking. Um, and while we've got this tiny little bit of this paint on here, although it's not the right one. I'll do a bit of a. I think this might be too light. It's not too bad on the drumsticks. Now, normally I'd put some. Dark sea, dark sea blue on, on the gaiters, but there's so little showing. I don't really think it's going to have any effect. So we'll, uh, we'll just go for highlighting the, the actual edges of the gaiters themselves. really want to highlight the highlight the the shoes with the same with the same look because uh, it won't really be any any it, that's a problem if you use gray and then on the gaiters and then gray on the shoes it, it there's no there's no difference in materials there if that makes sense so we'll get some watered down brown paint of any description you'll choose. And I'll just put it over the black in places. Right, one thing I thought we've, I haven't done as well, well, apart from the peak cap, peak of the cap I should say, Shaka, is um, I haven't done the, the buttons either. And I'll have to switch off it in a second and just check what colour the buttons are because I cannot remember. Right, I've got myself a... I don't know if I've watered it down enough, so let's just check. It'll turn him into a clown if we we're careful. I've watered down some red paint. Taking a lot of the excess off on my paper towel. Now we're just going to put some strategic, no 
Yeah, I've gone too far there. If you can catch it quick enough with a wet brush, you should be able to wick it away, which I've done there. He's done it again. That's because I'm not wicked enough away, I think. Or I haven't uh, diluted the paint enough. It's only a small face, so we're um, a bit in the ears. And then in the corners, without them bleeding through to the eyes. Put them in the corners of the eyes a bit. if the lips will do. So sometimes you can make the lips too red and it looks like they've got lipstick on so I do use a a different colour for that if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't pick it if it you know if it's too you know too silly looking like he's got lipstick on or something. I don't think that's too bad there. We'll just go into the nose. I'll sometimes use purple around the nose, but I'm just thinking this little guy, his face is uh, is, a, is a bit too small, really, to uh, pick it out with too much. I'll just do a bit of that red, just dilute this red down again a bit. I'll put a bit in between there tops of the fingers here. A tiny bit at the top of the knuckles. It's surprising what a tiny bit of red diluted paint how it'll pick a figure up for you. close his eyes look crap forgive my French but I don't think I'm going to get any better out of that without sometimes you just think no nope, the eyes are too small I'm, uh, I'm going with that because obviously right, right up close yeah you know but when he's a bit further away he doesn't look uh, he doesn't look so bad <laughs> famous last words uh, the the only thing I want to do now apart from the buttons is, uh, is just get some brown paint around that base. I'm just going to see if I've got some brown paint left on my my palette that's any good. It's all starting to get a bit gungy now. Um, get me rough bay. I use all old brushes for different uh, purposes. Oh, we might just get away with it. I always paint the bases. It, it just it does save. Yeah, yeah on, on a single figure like he's going to be based singly. Um, it's not such a big deal, but if you're putting them in groups on a on a base, I, I just think um, it, it's just easier. You haven't, if especially if you're using say grey primer like I do, um, you you don't want to look down at the base and then see you know chunks of grey showing through where you've not been able to get in there once they're all stuck down. So it just gives a bit of camouflage to the base, you know, before you actually start doing anything with your sand and PVA or filler, whatever you use. And it doesn't matter what it what it is, you know. If I've got any type of brown on here, I'll just uh, sludge it into the into the base, even if it's three or four different colour browns. It's just there to to give some. Uh, I think there's a tiny bit showing there, but we'll see if we can just do one more hit with that. To use a completely different brown. As I say, it doesn't really matter as long as that's uh, hidden. Right, so our figure's almost done. 
that looks a bit stark the the gaiters under the under the bright lights that we've got at the moment but I don't think it looks too bad actually from the from a couple of few inches away right guys that's our completed figure although I'm bound to see something um, that I don't like and redo between now and uh, the video going up but uh, yeah, that's our guy. The only thing I haven't done, which I would normally have done with something with a bit more space, is put some company badges, uh, a heart, or a, in the early days before that, I mean, you could put the end for Napoleon, um, but on the earlier ones, they often had hearts and um, stars and different things, that, uh, and there was no set, set play, uh, you know. Uh, the cloverleaf symbol, all that type of stuff. It, it, there wasn't a set one for each company. Each each regiment would be different. So uh, the only reason I haven't is there isn't a lot of space in the in the middle turn backs and the end, the right hand one particularly to to really show it off. And I just think with the piping, it's going to get a bit too busy. So uh, I've decided to leave those off. I'm still looking for a bit of brighter green of some description or even maybe a yellow just to get this uh, this wreath to pop a bit more I think it looks a bit messy at the moment um, but apart from that I think that's our little fella finished uh, I might just clean the uh, uh, put a black line around the uh, the belt around the the actual apron itself and just tidy it up on the top there slightly um, I put some extra white dots on the on the white vest and on the turn backs themselves. Oh, and I've just got to do a tiny bit more to that drum skin and put a bit of a brown. Normally, uh, just to show where they, they've been beating it with a with a drum, uh, it's sometimes better to put like a little a little circle of brown in uh, just to show where they've been beating the drum. But no, I mean that's our guy done. Uh, next time you see him, I'll obviously get him on a base, so the video will be delayed by a day or two. But um, I think it's just better seeing rather than seeing my my grubby fingers holding a holding a milk bottle top. It's better if you get the finished you know the finished figure as a thumbnail for you guys to know what you're actually be uh, getting yourselves into. So guys, yes, it has definitely not been an hour's video. Uh, what happened was, uh, I had all intents and purposes of, of putting no sound on this and then narrate, you know, speeding it up and narrating over it and all that good stuff that I see other people do. And as usual with me, <laughs> I just got, just got into doing the painting and uh, started waffling and you've ended up with a <laughs> three, three hour video. So, uh, if you've got the stamina to stick with this this whole two or three hours, how long it takes, I've no idea until I load it up. Um, you know, good on you. And I've just noticed a tiny, tiny bit of blooming primer showing there by his leg, so I'm gonna have to do that as well before we do anything else. So guys, thank you very, very much for stopping by and taking a look at my videos. It's always appreciated, whether it's the tutorials, you know, whether it's two or three minutes showing something I've painted or a, a, a workbench update or just a waffle on something in general uh, i hope you find there's something interest on the channel and i always uh, do appreciate your comments and subscriptions and all that good stuff so you take care of yourselves i hope everything goes well with you and we'll catch each other very soon on another video